Hello everyone and welcome back to our second part of to draw a stone. And if you haven't watched the first video, um, please do because there's a lot of information in there. And we are basically doing John Ruskin's lesson from the Elements of Drawing, this book here that I talked about. And the lesson is lesson exercise eight. And I went over the first part, which was really important. And I am not going to follow um, his instructions for this part because I have my own way of teaching it um, after doing his many times. And um, I think it's just easier to follow. So if you get his book, I highly recommend trying his way. Um, but I'm going to do it my own way um, that I've kind of developed over, over many years of teaching it. So here's our supplies. I'll go over them again. I have an HB pencil sharpened to a really fine point. However you do that, just make sure that every now and then you can keep it sharp by either um, refining the point of the long point on a piece of sandpaper or by sharpening it again with your sharpener if you're using a regular sharpener. You just want to make sure you always have a very, very sharp point when you're drawing. Okay, it makes a big difference. Okay, so I did that. And then I have here a kneaded eraser if I need it. I have a tortillon if I need it. And I'm just going to wipe off the end so it's not full of graphite. But tortillons are just these very sharp blending sticks. And you might not need it, but it's good to have just in case. I also have a Tombow Mono Zero um, eraser that's actually very, very fine. And I cut it with an, an X-Acto knife so that it's like a chisel tip. So I have that in case I need it. I have my stone. And then I have here a pad of Stonehenge Light, which is a drawing paper um, that is great for exercises. You get It's a little better value. Um, it's the same texture as regular Stonehenge, but it's a little less expensive. Okay, so I want to start out by talking about something that we have talked about many, many times. Oh, the other thing is we talked about light. Now, right here, I'm in a north-facing window with a little bit of a, an eastern, I'm sorry, a western exposure as well. Um, but most of the light's coming in from the north. All right, I'm closer to that window. Um, and obviously the light is not coming in from to my left. It, it would be coming in from the west, unless it was late afternoon. I'm sorry, from the east, unless it was late afternoon, and then it might come in a little bit from the west. But I have an overhead light on, so let's see what happens if I turn it off. You can see I've got two shadows going on here, because I've got the light from above and the light from the window. If I turn it off, I go down to one shadow, okay? So hopefully this is light enough for you to see that. I have one shadow being cast from my stone. So this is really how I want to look at my stone, all right, with one um, cast shadow. And what I'm hoping is that when I'm doing this video, um, I will zoom in on the drawing so you can really, really see and turn the light off every now and then so you can see and so I can see. But I need to turn this on <clears throat> because I believe, well, it's not that different, to be honest with you. Let's just leave it off. We'll leave it off. Hopefully that'll be good and I will continue to zoom in when I edit. Um, so you wanna make sure that when you're actually doing the drawing, which I don't want you to do while you're watching this, you should watch this first and then do the drawing on your own, um, that you have a good light source with only one shadow, okay? And it also illuminates your um, your stone in a different way. So I've got the light coming here. So it's hitting the stone here. So it's going to be lighter on this side, gradually getting darker over here. And then there's the cast shadow. That's really, really important because we want to learn how to see those light and dark spaces. Okay. So before we begin, I want to talk about something that I call the touch of an angel wing or a butterfly wing or an angel kiss. And I have a video, a whole video lesson on this here on Patreon. If you search under graphite techniques, it's one of the very first videos we did. And what this means is that when we draw, and I'm going to just going to sort of do this over on this side. When we draw, we want to very, very lightly touch the paper. We do not want to press hard. 
This is one of the benefits of having a really long point because if I press too hard, this point is going to break, all right? But more than that, if I press too hard, it's going to disrupt the texture of my paper. This paper has a beautiful texture and we always want to see that texture, okay? We always want it to be apparent. If we use graphite in too hard of a way, let me just get another pencil that um, isn't so sharp. So if I use a pencil and I press too hard, I'm getting rid of that paper and my drawing, all of a sudden I get lines and creases and it just doesn't look as good. But if I use a really, really light touch, I can see the light of the paper. If shining through and the texture of that paper, it gives our drawings a very delicate, beautiful presence. All right, it's really, really important. Now, if I needed this to be darker, I can continue to add more layers with a really light touch, okay? And I can go over it many times. And no matter how many times I go over it with a light touch, it's going to get darker and darker, all right? But I'm still going to see the texture of that paper coming through. So I hope that makes sense. I have a whole video on this that you can watch. And it takes practice. So I would recommend doing some of those exercises that I give you in that video. Um, and I'll try to put a link to it um, in the description box of this video. So um, do those exercises because it will train you to have a delicate touch. It's so, so important that we learn that. Because then no matter what we do, our art will have a delicacy and we are being aware of the texture of our materials. Okay, so it's really, really important. And it's also how we get beautiful textures in our drawing, like the texture of the stone. If I go in right away and draw too hard, number one, I'm gonna get a shiny reflective surface and I'm losing all capability of putting texture into my drawing. Okay, so it's really, really important to do that. <clears throat> so, I want you to practice that first and just always be aware of this really light touch, okay? So I'm gonna move my stone a little bit closer here. I'm gonna have it kind of this way on my paper. And the first thing I'm going to do is just sort of mark off, um, and I can even use my stone if I want to. I can even mark off, just take it and just sort of lightly mark one end another end and then where it ends. Okay, I can either do that by putting it, by just tracing it around, around the stone, which for a small object, that's perfectly fine. But if you have something bigger, you're gonna have to do it by just sight, all right? So, and, and this takes practice. So <clears throat> you might just take a look at it and say, okay, I've, you know, the top is about here, here, the width is about, here and the bottom's about here. You know what I mean? So you're just putting a few little tick marks to give yourself an idea, all right? But <clears throat> the very first thing that we want to do is to sort of draw in the shape of our object and then fill it in, all right? So we're looking at our stone and we wanna go as light as possible because as we progress, we're gonna put more layers on and add darkness where we see it. But in the beginning, I'm just going to start in an area and just start putting in very, very, very fine markings, almost like little circular marks with my pencil. <clears throat> you can already see where those tick marks are just too dark, okay? And we can, we can lift those later. But while I'm doing it, I'm noticing on my object direction of form. So what I mean by that is I'm not just taking my pencil and moving it back and forth and filling the whole thing in. I'm going in different directions to sort of mimic what I see. The, the contours and the textures and all of those things matter. All right. So I'm just kind of going along I see it kind of come this way. And 
And there's not a lot of contour here, okay? But I know that I don't want to just go back and forth. So here I see it kind of coming straight down, but I see a little, little change in direction of the texture here. And I'm just using my pencil to very slowly <clears throat> fill it in. We don't need to worry about value. We don't need to worry about any of that yet. We're just filling in the shape of the stone. Now remember this. <clears throat> when we get it down, we're going to we're going to compare. We're going to use our eyes to compare what we have on the paper to what we have right in front of us and we can make adjustments. Okay, so with pencil, it's really great to know that nothing is ever permanent. Now, I could <clears throat> make this faster and, and do a time lapse, but I really want you to see the whole process. And so it might be kind of boring. <clears throat> I'm, I am going to turn my light on a little bit because it's, it's actually just hard for me to see. <laughs> um, I need the light right now. Now, remember... This is an exercise, all right? This is not how we'll probably end up drawing a stone. This is an exercise to start training yourself how to see. And what you're gonna notice is that when you do something like this and you take this slow approach to slowly build up a, a drawing in an exercise like this, is that it's quite amazing to begin a drawing without an outline. Um, eventually, you know, you kind of have to, to do an outline sometimes. So, so don't, um, don't think that you should never do an outline. That's, that's really not not true. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we, we really need that big picture, especially with like a bird or something like that. We, you know, or a landscape or <clears throat> we need to get all the elements in and make sure they're positioned right on our paper before we start spending a lot of time like this. But this is an exercise. But what you will notice is that it's a really beautiful thing to begin a drawing without outlines. And you will use that over and over again, especially for smaller areas, for things like eyes and noses and mouths, if you ever do people. Um, things, you know, nothing in nature really has an outline, okay? So <clears throat> to learn how to, to, to draw things a little bit without them is a wonderful exercise. But sometimes they are necessary, and sometimes they're actually a design element. You know, I mean, you, you want, like, if you're doing a pen and ink and wash, those lines really matter. But for this, we're trying to do it without it. So I hope you can see how delicately I'm going about this and how slowly. <clears throat> I'm going very, very slowly. Unfortunately, I met my friend for breakfast quickly because we had to do some paperwork and I wasn't there very long. <clears throat> but I had two cups of coffee and I normally drink decaf. And I feel it. I feel shaky. <laughs> so... Do yourself a favor when you do this exercise and try to be calm. You can always rest your hand <clears throat> on, on the paper a little bit if you need to.
and you're going for sort of all one value <clears throat> but every now and then I mean you might get a darker mark I certainly am because again I'm uh, feeling a little shaky The other thing I want to say about this is when we're talking about direction of form as something so simple like this stone, um, there is no right or wrong way. The only thing that's wrong is to just go in one direction or this way. But we're all going to see things differently. Our, our, our eyes are all going to see things differently. So you are not supposed to be copying what I'm doing, but really just taking your stone and getting set up like Ruskin advises and just going about it your own way in this very slow way and yours you're going to have a different stone number one and you know what you might see it different if you did it two days from now again you may see it differently and that's okay because this is just the first layer and when we start to put in shading and texture and all of those things it's going to really take shape The important thing is, is we're really taking our slow time. I never noticed that it has sort of this little raised area before. I've drawn this stone before. Um, <clears throat> I may have drawn the other side, though. So again, we're going to take our time with this, okay? Um, and I'm not going to make these videos really long. I'm, I'm really trying to keep them under 30 minutes um, so they don't require a huge chunk of your time at any one time. And then tomorrow or Sunday, we're going to have a dandelion lesson, so we'll get a little break from drawing and do some fun painting. And then next week, um, we'll start another watercolor project. But this, we're really going to take our time. And what I wanted to mention is that starting in January, um, end of January, I'm going to be filming a long form class. And producing it myself, as I think I've talked about here before. And it's going to be available on my website. Um, through Teachable. I don't think I'm going to do Skillshare because, I don't know, I haven't really, honestly, I'm not 100% certain about that yet. Um, but this class is going to be all about presence and poetry in our work, which is a very abstract subject, but I have some ideas, some really good ideas about how to teach this and how to um, help you refine your vision, your artistic vision, and start putting more um, poetry and refinement in your work, whether you work abstractly or whether you want to work more realistically, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever we do, we often, we often want that. We want to refine our vision and, and discover our own voice, and it's really going to be about that. And it is a class that I um, was supposed to be making with Craftsy Blueprint this year. But as I've talked about before, I, I was tired of them sitting on it. And so I took it back for myself and I'm going to do it myself. Mm. 
Okay, so this is not perfect, but we're never we're never going for perfect. And you'll notice that as you're doing this, you're going to see where you're off a little bit, and you can go in and make a few adjustments. Okay. So that took quite a long time, right? If we were just sketching something, it might take a minute, right? But we took our time with it. I took my time with it, and I really, really focused on trying to get the the uh, sort of the volume of this rock, the shape of this rock down on the paper in a very delicate way. Now, before we move on, so what I like to do is take my kneaded eraser and anywhere, or I, I might even take this one because... Um, the areas are so small that I want to correct. And anywhere that I feel like I was a little heavy-handed, I can go with in, in with my eraser and I can very delicately work those out. And I can go back with my pencil again if I if I take too much out. Okay, you can also do it with a kneaded eraser. I've only got a couple spots. And when I'm working like this delicately with pencil, I use a brush to remove any um, graphite, I mean, any eraser dust. I also have this handy little vacuum that I should bring in that Zorana sent me. That is the coolest thing, and I've been using it a lot. Really went for it there. So, needed eraser, same thing. You can just use the tip of it. But this kneaded eraser, I mean, it's pretty new and it might take off too much, so. All right, then I can go back with my pencil and bring my rock back because I don't want to do anything um, rotely. I don't, want, I, I don't want to ever just draw and fill it in without being mindful and looking at my example, my sample, my rock. Nothing um, is random. It's very specific work. Okay, we're being very, very specific with our marks here. And what do I mean by that? Um, that might be confusing. So, if I'm drawing, let's say I'm drawing a leaf. And this is just any old leaf, right? But let's say I'm drawing a very specific leaf, and I start to fill in in direction of form, and I'm going along, and all of a sudden I start to just do it because I think I know what it's going to be like, <laughs> right? I don't ever want to think I know. I want to always be looking. Okay, this is a this is a danger for any kind of art that we do where we just fill in to fill in. Um, when we're trying to be mindful and delicate with our work and put presence in our work, we always want to be mindful of our mark making. Okay, they're always specific. They're always specific. Okay, so that is my first layer, all right, of my rock. Now, what I tend to do, and there are a couple different ways of doing this, and and I hesitate, I don't want to really teach you these other ways yet because um, they can be frustrating. And sometimes I will take like an 8H pencil or a 6H pencil and I blend with that. All right, so I'm looking at the rock in, in areas where I want to start blending and adding a little bit of shadow. And I'm going to use this pencil as a blender, okay? Or sometimes I use a brush. So... I've got a really soft brush and I can go in for really delicate areas and just sort of smooth with a brush. And you can try this, okay? This side of my stone is a little darker, so I might want to go in 
and just soften some areas that I see right away are much darker. Okay, and this is a, a very delicate way to do it. All right, but it can be tricky. You can try it, all right? So what I suggest for when you're first beginning is to use a tortillana or a blending stick. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the overall picture. I'm saying, okay, I see it's a little bit darker on this side. So I'm, and do you hear, I'm barely touching my paper. I'm using as delicate a touch as I used with my pencil. And I'm not just doing it rotely, I am actually looking very carefully and I'm using direction of form with the blending stick too. And this is just the initial sort of blending And we're not going to do the shadow yet. You can see how many shadows I have here. Let me just turn this off for a minute because I'm actually not getting a really clear picture. <clears throat> so I've softened where it's darker on that side, which is not everywhere. But on this side, now that I'm moving over here, it's quite a bit darker. And so I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm still looking at direction of form. I'm not just going back and forth. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to embed the graphite in the paper. I want to still see those marks. I want to still see the texture of my paper. I'm using a very delicate touch. I'm anchoring my hand on the paper so I'm never pushing on, on my blending stick. And I've got it to the side so I'm not dulling the point. I'm not using it like a pencil at all. I'm only doing it in direction of form where I see it. But just by doing that little bit, all right, I'm already starting to get more roundness than I had to begin with. I'm really taking my time. And again, if this gets boring and you think you've got the hang of it, then you can fast forward a little bit. But I don't I don't want a time lapse just in case. Um, I just I personally really can't stand it <laughs> when people do that. When I'm watching, I want to really watch. Okay. So that's that step. And now, for my last step, I don't want to put the shadow in yet. I want to wait, okay, for quite a while. So my last step for today is to take my kneaded eraser, all right, and sort of make it into like a teardrop shape. All right, and then push it down so you get a flat surface. All right, and it probably even needs to be smaller than that. And I want to look at my rock and I say, is there anywhere that I need to lift out a little light? And I see I want to lift out a little light right in here. All 
over to here. And then a little bit, maybe along this very edge in here. And right along the top. Not much. I'm barely touching the paper. Okay, so I've added a little bit of light back in where I needed it. And that is all I want to do for now. All right, I think this is a good place, a good place to end because our next layer um, is going to take the longest where we just sort of comb over it and use our pencil to do intuitive mark making and really give the texture of our rock. And then we're going to go back and we're going to put in a little bit more shadow where we need it and add the shadow. Okay, so that'll definitely be at least a half an hour. So this is where we'll leave it now. Okay, now I want you to get this far with your rock, but I also want you to practice some exercises using a light touch, All right? And, and filling it, you could do something as simple as draw a bunch of squares on your paper and use your pencil to fill in. Don't worry about going outside of your square. That comes later, okay? Be having that much control. I'm not that concerned about you going out of your square, but I'm concerned about you getting a really even, even um, fill that you see all of that texture of the paper shining through. So it's, it's very, very important to use the most delicate touch you can. If I <clears throat> zoom in on this, I don't know. I mean, all of my marks are there. It's very, very, very delicate. Okay, so that is our next lesson for this. I will see you in a day or two with a dandelion lesson. Next week, we'll start a watercolor project again, and we'll keep working on this, okay? Um, so try it. Please try it. It, it. it may seem like such a simple thing to do this, but it will teach you a tremendous amount. And, and mostly what it teaches us is how to slow down to slow down and not just dash something off because we're all guilty of that, right? Um, and, and some of the questions that you all have asked me have a lot to do with slowing down and really seeing. Perception is everything in art, okay? A delicate touch is everything, whether you are creating a big, bold abstract or a very refined drawing of a seashell, for instance, all right? Delicateness matters. And this is how we achieve it. We, we train ourselves to slow down. All right. It will help everything that you do. Okay. That's it for today. I hope you're having a lovely day. My granddaughter's coming over later and I'm babysitting her um, until tomorrow around noon. And then, um, and then I, I'm hoping I can make a video tomorrow. I'm not positive it, for sure by Sunday. Um, but maybe tomorrow if I have time. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you have any questions at all, just ask.